In today's video, I'm gonna use some macro tricks, including focus stacking and some advanced lighting techniques to try and make some money from a photo just like this. There is a huge crossover in the skills that you would need for macro photography and the skills that you would need for product photography. And product photography is an area of photography where you can actually make some money with your camera. So many product shoots involving getting up close on that product and showing those tiny little details. Often it will involve doing focus stacking to make sure that all of it is nice and sharp. And many times it will also involve using some different lighting setups to make sure that that subject looks its best. Now regularly, I will use all of my macro knowledge in my product photography, again, with doing close-up focusing, focus stacking and lighting. And many of my biggest commercial jobs have involved some kind of macro skill. And in fact, for some of them, I was actually hired simply on the back of the fact that I shoot macro. So that is exactly what I'm gonna to do today with these Guinness cans. Now, just to be totally clear at this point, there is no affiliation with me and Guinness. This is not a paid job. This is not an advertisement. I am simply wanting to create a stark, eye-catching image, the sort of shot that I might do for a commercial client. And it's a shot that is gonna involve using some of our macro skills. So I thought it'd be quite an interesting shot to do. I think I've come up with quite a nice idea for a shot and it is the sort of thing that actually you could do and try and sell that to paying clients. So let's actually go and take a look at the scene we've got set up here. So I've set up this V shape of Guinness cans because what I want to achieve here is this really nice shot of this as the hero can right in front of the camera being flanked with this arrow of other Guinness cans. You can sort of get an idea of the shape of the shot that I'm going for just by looking at the back of camera. But right now, all we're really seeing is the ambient light in the room. There is a lot of work I've got to do with the lighting. So speaking of that lighting, what I want to achieve is a really nice crisp edge light either side of each can. Um, and how I'm going to do that is by using these strip boxes. I've got one here and I've got another one here. And these are gonna create that beautiful light on the side. In fact, let's actually start taking some shots and we'll see what that looks like. In terms of the composition though, I've got my 24 to 105 mil lens on here and I'm at 24 millimeters. I really want this wide angle look. Uh, I've got my camera close to the can, but by going super wide, it gives us this really dramatic stance and we're almost looking up at the logo. I tried another one where I was a little bit further away and I zoomed in and I don't think it has quite the same impact. I've done a little bit of playing around already to find the shot that I want and this is what we're going for. Let's take that first shot and I want to make sure that my first image basically is a black frame. So if I take this now, I'm at F14 for sharpness. I'm at 200th of a second and my ISO at its lowest point, that is ISO 100. If I just snap that now, and we can see that we've got essentially a black frame. There's a tiny little bit of light coming from my video light, but it's not enough to cause a problem. So if I now turn on my trigger for my lights, um, what I'll do is I'll just turn off my top light and I'll turn off one of my side lights. And so now if I just bring in one light, we can see that it is bringing in a lovely edge light just on the side of those cans to the right. So now if we then look at our other light and we bring that in, we turn off the first one, we can see we are getting basically exactly the same effect, but on the other side of the cans. So of course, if we combine those together, we should get lovely nice edge lighting on both sides of the cans. It's really easy to see here how it kind of carves out that shape because I'm shooting on this uh, Perspex uh, reflective black. We also get the nice reflection uh, in the, uh, on the, underneath the cans as well, which I really, really like. But of course, we haven't got any kind of detail on the front of the can. You can't see the word Guinness, you can't see the Guinness logo, uh, so we need to fix that. So I will simply turn on this light. I'm controlling all of it from the trigger. It makes everything much, much easier. I'm not having to reach up and play around with things. 
all of the uh, power and uh, adjustments are made simply from this little unit on the top of my camera. So now if I take this shot, hopefully we get everything looking pretty much as I want it to. We've got that lovely edge lighting on the cans and then we've got that nice light uh, from this top light that's actually lighting up our logo. This kind of lighting is probably quite a bit more advanced than I would normally do for most macro shots. Most of the time I use flash for uh, nature and outdoor macro. Uh, I tend to use just the one light and I'll try and create that bit of shadow, but instead what I'm doing here is actually trying to really build that light up to give that sort of crisp commercial looking shot. But the principles are exactly the same. It's about how to balance your exposure with the power of the light, how to use the modifiers to craft that light to look exactly like you want it. And I've absolutely found that the more I experiment with my light in one side of photography, the more I'm able to do in another area. So by learning how to do product lighting like this, I'm able to be a lot more creative with my lighting when I'm out in the field hunting for macro shots. And then the same goes for my focus because what I wanna do is focus stack this shot because when I'm focused right up close on that front can, the cans going further back will eventually become out of focus. And I wanna make sure that every single one is pin sharp. So by focus stacking, I can achieve that. So again, while it might seem that product photography and macro have nothing in common, I'm actually using the exact same techniques. So what I'll do just to make sure that I know when my stack is going to start is I'm gonna put my hand in front of the camera and take a photo. That way I will just see a picture of a hand and I know exactly when my stack will start. So I'm manually focusing this shot. I haven't changed my settings, still F14, 200th of a second. And I'm zooming in and I'm making sure that I have got pin sharp focus right on that front can, which I have, looks absolutely spot on and then I'm going to take my shot. That looks really good. And then I'm going to zoom in and I'm gonna change my focus to the next layer back. And I'm gonna take another shot. And then for the third layer, take my shot. And finally for the ones right at the back, and we take our shot. And that should be all the shots I need. Now it might seem like I'm blowing through this quite quickly, but the reality is that actually this setup, getting the lights in the right place, crafting the shape of the light to fall exactly where I wanted it, did take quite a bit more time. But for the purposes of making, hopefully a slightly more enjoyable and easy to watch video, I've just shown you this finished setup rather than all of the fine tuning that can take forever. But really those few shots, the front, the next one, next one, next one, that is all we need to put our shot together. So let's take these photos over into Lightroom and Photoshop and see where we go from there. So I've brought those shots over into Lightroom and if we have a quick look, we can see what I mean about having that nice edge lighting. We've got beautiful like lines coming down each side of the can and because of the way that I position those lights, it looks identical on every single can going back. I'm really, really pleased with how this comes out and the overhead one has really lit up those labels it looks great. But we focus stacked this and that is important because if we just have a zoom in here, a little bit too close, on our front label, it's really nice and sharp. And then clearly, as we get towards the ones at the back, it's not sharp at all. And then as we move through, we can see it gets increasingly sharper. Now this one is absolutely pin sharp and then the one at the front isn't sharp at all. So that's easily fixed. All I do is I select all of these. I will right click export them. I've not done any editing to them yet. And I'll just put them in a subfolder called Guinness. I've spelled it wrong. Stack video and caps is on. Doesn't matter. It's irrelevant. I'm going to export them as DNGs. So we keep all of that data and hit export. Now, as always, this is just the way that I do my focus stacking. I like to do my focus stack and then do all of my edits. Other people have different ways of working and that's fine. So now I'm gonna load a piece of software called Helicon Focus. Now this is where I do all of my macro focus stacking. It does the best job. It's neater, it has fewer errors. Photoshop I find even with four images, it doesn't do a very neat job and I end up having to spend ages trying to paint bits back in. So with this one, I'm just gonna to go to my desktop. I'm gonna find that Guinness stack. 
these four ones. I'm going to load them all up, open those, and it will load them into our source images directory over here. Uh, I want method B, and I'm going to click render. And very quickly, it's done its business. And I can see very easily here that we have got every single bit of these cans nicely in focus. So I'm going to save it as Guinness Stacked, uh, where Guinness Stacked Video, fine, as a TIFF file, again, maximizing the quality. TIFF is a lossless format. And then we'll go into Lightroom and we will re-import that image. And here it is, and if we have a look, we can see, yep, it is pin sharp here on this one, pin sharp on this one, pin sharp on this one, and pin sharp on this one. Every single one, perfect focus. I am really pleased with that, which means we can now take it over into Photoshop, which is where 90% of the work in this image is going to be done. So I'm not gonna show you the whole Photoshop process because honestly, in some of my commercial images, I can spend hours and hours and hours doing things like dust removal, doing color correction, all kinds of adjustments to make a product image look absolutely perfect. And while one or two of you might be interested in that level of commercial product photography, most of you will find it extremely boring. So I'm just gonna kind of show you the basic overview of what I did, and maybe that's gonna give you some ideas of how you can apply some of those techniques to your own photography. So here is the shot in Photoshop, and there's a couple of things, of course, that we can see that's wrong. Uh, one, we've got dust and grime all over that tabletop because, yep, I hadn't dusted it properly, and it's looking pretty manky. And of course, the big one is that we have got our big soft boxes in shot, but that's fine because I've intentionally shot this on black, and uh, I wanted to be a very, very stark, black background shot, um, and that ad actually is gonna make it incredibly easy to get rid of. In fact, the easiest way to get rid of it is just to, let's say, create a new layer. Uh, I can bring my eyedropper tool, and I can select that black there, bring up my brush, nice big size, very big size in fact, hardness up, and my flow right to the top, and I can just paint. Whoa, that's too big a brush, smaller than that. That's fine for now, and I can literally just paint over it, and because it's the exact same black everywhere else, because we're going high contrast, it doesn't matter. You can't see what's going on. We can simply paint this away. Yes, right now I'm using a trackpad. Normally I'd be using at least a mouse, maybe even a graphics tablet, but you know what? This was a quick and easy edit. I couldn't be bothered hooking everything up. But just by painting in black there, look at the difference it's made. Now it looks like this beautiful studio shop. It's looking really cool. So just for ease, I will merge that down and we've got one layer here. I'm gonna duplicate that and go into filter, camera raw filter, and this is gonna bring up basically the exact same controls that you would see in Lightroom. First of all, what I'm gonna do is go down to our geometry tab, because what I wanna do is correct for that kind of leaning inwards. We've gone with a up close wide angle shot to give it that uh, cool sort of looking up vibe, but I still wanna correct uh, for that lean, as you might do if you're taking photos of buildings. I can try just going with auto, and you know what? I don't think that's a great job. So instead, I'm gonna go with manual, and I'm gonna get my my tool here, and I can literally bring in those lines myself where they should be on that can, and then where they should be on this can, and then Photoshop has, as you can see, done the rest. Uh, I might do a few little basic exposure tweaks at this point, bring up that contrast, maybe up that exposure, whites, bring down the shadows quite a bit, maybe something down here. Uh, what I really wanted to go for with this shot is a very kind of high contrast punchy image because it's Guinness and the whole branding is black and white, little bit of that orange coming through from the logo. So I can afford to push some of these sliders a little bit further to give it a little bit of extra punch, maybe even a little bit of clarity because if you pulse that, it really does kind of make a lot of those details stand out really nicely. So I'm gonna put that at plus 10. Also gonna to go to our color mixer and maybe grab that luminance of the yellows because I know that yellow is gonna be in the Guinness logo in the harp. And again, if I just pulse that up and down, you can see how much more that's really pulling things out. Maybe in the oranges a little bit as well. And I'm gonna increase the saturation of the yellow 
and the orange. So now we've got a really cool looking shot. So let's press OK and it's going to apply that correction and we've got, uh, because that's applied over the top of this image, uh, we've still got that black background. So you can already see just how much difference this has made. And on the cleanup, there's a few ways I can do this. Now, of course, using the uh, paintbrush again, I could just paint over that. And maybe on these parts, I would simply just paint away the same black that we've got everywhere else. Um, certainly anything that's on the black plastic. But now when we start to get inside where the cans are, things get a little bit more, I'm afraid, boring and time consuming. So what I'm gonna use is the spot healing brush tool. Now this will allow me to simply go in and just click over on top of all these little bits of dust and it will get rid of them. But there are a lot of them and it does take, I'm afraid, a long time. It's one of those jobs where you can rush it and you can try and use the, the dust and scratch tool and sometimes that will work okay, sometimes it will look weird. Um, but then other times you just got to put in the effort, like on this hair, try and get rid of that, get rid of some of these ones. There is also an actual hair on my screen. That's not helping. Uh, so I'm not going to do all of this because it takes ages. I've shown this already in the other ones, but you get the idea. It is unfortunately about going around, spending the time, zooming right in so that you can see exactly where those different little things are and you can dot around and start getting rid of them. But I will leave it at that for those ones and I will just go on to a couple of other things. So first of all, I have noticed that despite our correction, we've still got the, we've got the cans now going nice and upright, but the reflection is sort of dipping inwards in a way that I don't think looks great. So that's gonna be easily corrected just by bringing up a uh, square marquee tool. I'm going to press Command and T. That's going to bring up the transform tool and I'm just going to do skew and I'm going to pull it out a little bit this side, pull it out a little bit this side until everything kind of lines up nicely. That's it. That's another very easy fix. And so other things that I would be looking for, apart from again, making sure that all the dust has gone, is just making sure that like the logo looks good, that we haven't got like smudges here. And again, all of this dust and actual scuffs on the can, but everything else looks pretty good. Again, you know, a little dense here. Again, probably just get our um, uh, spot removal. Yeah, that's done absolutely great job. Um, very easy to do. But other than that, the bulk of the work here was done in the lighting. It's about getting that shot as close to perfect as we can when we're actually taking the image so that it's meaning that we don't have as much work to sit here and do in Photoshop. And actually, I'm really, really pleased with how this looks as it is. But I would probably want to do this as a 16.9, really bring it in nice and tight. I'm imagining this as uh, maybe a, a nice magazine spread, a double spread, or maybe on a big billboard, something like that. I think I could really see that looking, looking pretty cool. And so I'd bring it in something like this. We've got extra black on this side. So again, it's easy enough. I will just do this straight down and it's filled it in. And it may be that if you're painting in black, if you bring in a levels adjustment and really ramp it up, you might start to see right at the top, as we, we can see here, that not all of it is properly black. So it may be that I need to kind of go back in with that and just make sure that it is all properly black where it should be. So that if people are kind of viewing it on different monitors, then it's not we're not kind of seeing where I've crudely painted things in. Instead, we are seeing what the color really should be. And I think something like that was it looks fine. And then all we need to do you just hide that adjustment. And there's all kinds of things you can do from here. Uh, I played around a lot with uh, things like a adding a little bit of background light. I played with the reflections. I played with all kinds of things just to kind of throw some ideas around and see if I can make it look like an even more polished commercial shot. But to be honest, a lot of that is much more on the Photoshop side. And what I really wanted to show is just how uh, applicable the macro skills are in a product shot like this. And I think that regular viewers of my channel will have recognized 
all of the things that I've done so far from the focus stacking and blending those things together and then using the camera raw tools to kind of bring out that exposure and play with those color channels. So if you've been into macro photography and you're maybe looking for some ideas of things that you can shoot if you're not going out and about, then really consider products if you've just bought something new maybe you've just bought a new lens well maybe before you go and take photos with that lens why not try and do some really cool product photos of that lens or maybe you've got a new iphone maybe you just got a new remote for your tv whatever it might be just try taking some photos if nothing else it's great practice for how to use your lighting how to do focus stacking how to think about composition for small objects and all of those lessons that you learn doing that you can then take out with you into the wild when you want to take some proper outdoor nature macro shots. And if you find that you're really good at doing the product stuff, then maybe you can start actually making some money, approaching local brands, local beer companies, whatever it is, and actually try and do that and make some money with your camera. But I'm going to call it a day there. I really hope that you have enjoyed this video, uh, or maybe you just found it a little bit useful in seeing how I would go about taking product photos like this using close-up techniques. I would love to hear your thoughts on what I've done here today and whether if you're a nature and outdoor macro photographer, have you found any of this maybe inspirational or maybe is it something you would want to actually try yourself or would you rather me just be out in the woods surrounded by leaves? So please do dive into the comments and let me know all of your thoughts and if you've enjoyed seeing the video. And of course, if you have enjoyed it, then do please hit that like button. And of course, consider subscribing to my channel if you don't already, that is. And I will see you next time.